Hi, my name is Mara Horowitz. I'm an archaeologist at Purchase College of the State University of New York, and welcome to Peopling the Past. What topic are you talking about today? I'm talking about cook pots and daily life in the ancient Bronze Age cultures of Cyprus, southern Turkey, and northwest Syria. That's from three to 5,000 years ago. Cook pots are made of clay and were very common in the ancient world because metal was expensive and not often used for making pots and pans. In order to make a clay pot that would stand up to heat, special steps had to be taken and special material used. Ancient people prepared food every day of their lives. Their cook pots give us their lived experience. That begins with simple practicalities and works up to larger inferences about local history. Daily life was affected by many factors, including culture, social status and wealth, wars, imperial management, and climate change. Looking at the humble remains of daily life, such as cook pots, can give us clues to how those factors were affecting ordinary people in the past. The research questions I ask are, how are the daily lives of ancient people reflected in their household objects, like cook pots? What might cause changes in cook pot form and materials, such as changes in diet, technology, or culture? When cook pots change, are we seeing the effects of war, imperialism, assimilation, or climate change? Can we reconstruct a historical narrative using cook pots? What sources of data do I look at? First, the shape and size of cook pots. Then, the clay and added grits they were made from. We call that the fabric. Grits were added to the clay to make the pots stronger and able to withstand the heat of cooking. When I looked at cook pots from the Amok Valley in southern Turkey, I found that they were made of red clay with crushed calcite in the Middle Bronze Age and pale clay with crushed shell in the Late Bronze Age. That's quite a significant change. It means that potters changed the clay they used and changed the grits they liked to add. I also looked at the contexts in which cook pots are found. I discovered that after a long period of stability in the Middle Bronze Age, there are four successive destruction layers with human casualties in the transition to the Late Bronze Age. Historical records are few for this time, but can be helpful. Records from the Hittite and Egyptian empires both mention attacking sites in the region in this transitional period. I also look at scientific data. For example, evidence was found from pollen in sediment layers at the bottom of local lakes. Scientists drilled core samples from those layers, and the results showed a major drying trend in the region during this transitional time. Study of animal bones showed that during the transitional years, there was a sudden spike in wild animal bones in local trash, instead of the usual barnyard animal bones. That means the people had to hunt for food instead of relying on their flocks. How can this topic or material tell us about real people in the past? First, the relative size of a cook pot indicates the size of the household being fed. Some cultures have smaller cook pots overall and may be making sauces rather than whole dishes like stew or porridge. This is the case on Bronze Age Cyprus and Greece. On the Eastern Mediterranean mainland, cook pots were larger, even for small households, while in palaces they were enormous and could fit a whole lamb inside them. Second, the choice of clay and added grits indicates cultural and technological tradition handed down from potter to apprentice across generations. It also tells us about access to raw materials in the landscape, and in some cases also diet. Let's explore how clay inclusions can indicate diet. Experimental work is where archaeologists try out ancient methods and materials. I used experiments to explore whether the crushed shells added to clay for cook pots came from diet. Experiments in heating the shells before crushing them revealed different fracture patterns in raw shells versus heated ones. We concluded that the shells crushed for pottery had been heated to a temperature typical of boiling and steaming. Since this change in added grits took place at the transition from middle to late bronze, at the time when destructions were frequent and wild animal bones were more common, it may mean that local people were eating freshwater mussels because times were hard and their usual food was scarce. This was probably due to the wars and looting and 
could also have been due to the drought that scientists have identified at that time. To recreate ancient cook pots is the best way to test our theories for how they were made and used. I crushed these freshwater shells using a grindstone just like the ancient people. Then I mixed this clay with the crushed shells and sand and formed it into a pot. I discovered when I put the clay on the pottery wheel that the crushed shells are super sharp, so they must have used wooden tools to shape the pot. Once fired, these cook pots will be used to try cooking liquid foods, as well as steaming or boiling fresh mussels. I'll try cooking my own dinner in the pots to see how they work. Hopefully these experiments will continue to help us understand how people in the past made their pots and cooked their food. Thanks for watching. To find out more, check out peoplingthepast.com. <laughs>